I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This fan isn't perfect. In fact, it is far from it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything we hate about our Toyota Hiace camper van that we built in South America. But first, here's a super quick backstory about how we got here. In 2020, we flew to Santiago de Chile in search to buy and convert a van. At the time, our second camper van with the dreams of traveling South America by road. After weeks of searching and little on the market, we found what we thought was the perfect van, an ex ambulance within our budget at the time. With our Spanish level at almost zero, we bought the van over Google Translate from a local guy from a small town who spoke zero English. We started fitting out the van until COVID forced us out of the country. Three years later, we returned to continue where we left off and start our journey, but we were far from happy with everything about the van. So, here's five things we absolutely hate about this van. When designing this van, we thought we were being pretty smart by installing these two removable 30 litre water tanks due to the fact that we thought we would need to remove them to refill them in areas where we couldn't find a tap or taps were unreachable. Evidently though, we never really ever had to remove them as we could always find a way to refill the tanks without having to take them out. But filling them has become a major hate. One of the biggest downfalls was not being able to find clear plastic tanks or a tank with a level indicator as it is really difficult to find how much water is in the tank, especially when filling Filling. The only way we normally do it is by putting something in the top, but this has proven fatal on many occasions. Stop, 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 stop! When we are refilling the tank, as we have overflown it, not realizing that it was getting near to the top, inundating the van with water. This coupled with having to remove half the back storage just to fill the tanks has become a real pain in the ass. This van was originally a used ambulance in Chile. We mistakenly thought it would have been treated and maintained like most Western ambulances as they are generally kept in excellent condition. Well, that was a massive oversight as we found out later that this van was treated very poorly with a lot of dodgy fixes in its life. Furthermore, after we returned to South America after three years, the van was in even worse condition after sitting for three years in the hot, dry Santiago sun, meaning anything that was rubber had pretty much deteriorated. So after we finished the conversion we spent another three weeks every day in the mechanical workshop fixing all the repairs and getting the van back up to scratch which pretty much cost us half of what we paid for the van in the first place. During the first two months of our trip, we went through a severe teething stage where we would break down or find a new problem almost daily, meaning we were making friends with a lot of mechanics. What we really hated though was the anxiety that we grew every single time we heard or felt a new noise, thinking that we were gonna break down again. And a lot of the time we were in the middle of nowhere in the Patagonian wilderness. Fortunately though, because of this Toyota's bulletproof three litre diesel engine, we didn't have any mechanical issues with the engine. However, we pretty much had a problem with everything else. The internal standing height of this van is around about 170 centimeters and me being 190 centimeters, I find myself doing this quite a bit or bending over, which may not seem like quite a big deal, but trust me, it gets old fast. Especially when I'm trying to cook, change clothes or stretch, I know it is doing damage to my back, always having to bend over and not being able to stand up straight for long periods of time. At the time of buying this van, if our budget allowed, we would have 100% bought a van we can stand up in, as I think that is probably the number one priority when buying a van. If you're liking this video, the cheapest and easiest way you can support us is just by hitting that like button. If you want to see more van life and van build content like this, remember to light up the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the updates. When we first designed and built this van back in 2020, we both weren't working full time. So the 150 watt solar panel and 200 amp hour deep cycle battery was more than sufficient for our needs. However, fast forward to 2023 where we're both working remotely full time, the solar setup is now lacking the juice it needs to supply our battery. So with limited roof space to add another panel, we could increase our solar array with a portable solar blanket. However, finding these in South America is almost impossible and shipping them can lead to long delay times, lost shipments and super expensive shipping fees. For the time being, we are trying to conserve power wherever possible and run the engine when needed to recharge the battery. However, in the tropical rainy climates, we're having to do this much more often when there is a lot less sun. This means we're needing to monitor the battery level much more closely to make sure we don't kill our AGM battery, which is becoming a real chore. <laughs> So the engine from this old style van actually sits directly underneath the driver and passenger seats. Originally, this van did have a firewall heat shield that prevented the heat from rising and burning your ass when you drive. But over many years, this thing has completely deteriorated. We did attempt to replace it in Santiago with a similar product, but we couldn't find a really high quality product that would be as good as the factory. So over 
our trip over a year, this thing has started to deteriorate again, which means when driving in the hotter climates of Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia, it gets extremely hot in the cab and makes it very uncomfortable to drive with only our little 12 volt fans keeping us cool. So we usually arrive at our destination covered in sweat and feeling quite you know sticky the original heat shield also acted as a sound barrier between the engine bay and the cab and with that gone it is really like driving next to a mac truck this thing is so loud when we drive and most of the time we have to wear our noise cancelling airpods to kind of just manage the noise while we drive long distances lastly this five speed manual is geared super low which means our top speed is around about 80 to 90 kilometers an hour the previous owners did actually install larger tires on the back wheels to create a larger rolling resistance but it didn't help that much so luckily we're not in a hurry but yeah it is very slow when you're driving so that is the five things we hate most about this fan but you know what we do still love it well it's more of like a love-hate relationship but it has been our home on wheels for over a year now and it has taken us to some incredible locations around this continent we could only ever dream of